What a couple of weeks it's been in the lives of many of my executive coaching clients. And it's all about change, 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 change. So I decided to jump on a podcast and talk to you, everyone who's listening, a little about some of the tips that I can offer that will make change in your organization and in your career easier to handle. So if you're up to it, let's get rolling. First of all, I want to talk to you about how it impacts the employee workforce as a whole. The reality is, is that many of us, including you, I'm sure, have much of your identity caught up and embedded in the work that you do. So once an organization announces there's a massive change taking place, your identity is at risk. There's a process that maybe you created or that you've been making sure has been handled correctly for years and all of a sudden, zap, it's being shifted and changed. So as a manager of people, which everyone listening is, I want you to know that the first place you go is not the process and the announcement of the process itself. It's making sure that your employee's identity can shift with the new change. What do I mean by that? Ask them questions because typically the person doing the work knows more about what's going right and wrong than leadership. Ask them for what they would do if they were changing the process. Get them invested and embedded in the idea that the process has been fabulous for X number of years. That's why this company has been successful. In order to be equally successful in the future, we need to make adjustments for what's happening now and what's going on in the competition now. What ideas do you have to make that possible? So what you're doing right away, you're shifting their identity so that they're jumping into the new identity through the creation process. Honestly, Companies that announce first the change without talking to their employees have created a bunch of employees who are on the line. They're moving this way and they're moving that way. That's called passive aggressive. That's called disengaged. And that does not create healthy change for any organization. And that's why the statistics are so staggering that changes that are happening in corporations are failing right and left. So consider your workforce. Make sure you get them engaged. Next, I want you to think about the group dynamic. So often I see managers and corporations trying to get the entire group involved in the change that's taking place. That's the wrong first movement. What's important is to get key stakeholders who are part of the group on board so that they can influence and empower and create the idea of change. And when the grumbling happens, which it will, they have the power to kick back with an idea that's going to make that grumbling something that could be exciting. So yes, Give those key champions of change a bit more information than you do the entire group so they can seed positive potential and get people on board. But never forget communicating and communicating to the entire group is important. And next I want you to know it's about you. You and your strategic edge. So I get it. All of you out there are idea generators and you're big idea generators. You know what you see could be happening for the organization. And they've announced something that you've wanting to see happen in your organization for years. And so instantly you're in the mode of helping them because we women are helpers. And we like to add value everywhere we are. So you're talking to your managers about possibilities of where the project could go awry. You know, 
The company has decided they're marching seven soldiers down the pathway in the future instead of the five that they've been doing. But you know there's a bridge coming up that can only handle five abreast. So you're going, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need to look at that bridge. Instantly, I hate to say this to you. I really do hate to say this to you. Instantly, you're seen as someone who is opposed to change, which is exactly the opposite of what you wanted to have happen. What I recommend you do is start thinking of how can I champion this change such that the organization sees me as a champion for this change? What can I say to my manager about how great this idea is and how fabulous it is that the company is moving in this direction so everyone knows you're a champion of change? Because unfortunately, there are so many naysayers out there, it's hard for leadership to discern the difference between the stumbling block naysayers and the ones who appear to be naysayers but really are helpers. So first your job is in the timing of change. I am a champion of change and your organization knows it. And then next you say to yourself, this concern that I have, does it need to be spoken right now because it's going to create a huge problem for them right now? Or is this something that may come up six months from now? And if it's a six months down the road, hold your voice because they may discover it on their own. And only when you see they haven't, do you speak it. And then, and only then, will you be heard as the change agent you are. So let's go over what we've been talking about here. Just a bit more in detail. I know I hit it fast and furious. Passive aggressive workforce is the death knell of any organization. Whether you're an employee or a manager or a leader in the organization, you, as a strategic edge woman executive, needs to make sure that the people are taken care of, that the workforce is communicated with, and that they are part of the process. I can't tell you there's been research after research that shows that announcements are made and then silence, very little communication is made. And so, so many of the background conversations behind change has to do with speculation on the part of the workforce. And speculation is not a good thing. You want to make sure that they know the facts. You want to make sure that you've connected them powerfully to the process that's moving in. And you want them to feel on board. Are you going to get everyone? Absolutely not. And that's where I was talking about the group dynamic. So as a manager, as an employee, you want to do your best to connect everyone in the workforce to the change. And I want you to understand group dynamic. The reality is, is that group dynamic is such, and this sounds so terrible, and I actually hate to say it out loud, but I'm going to anyway, because I'm giving you the secrets of the game. And I know this doesn't represent any of your thinking or attitude. In group, it's an amorphous mass. Very few of that amorphous mass cares enough one way or the other to make dramatic shifts. So what I want you to know is if the naysayers, those who are opposed to change, have a far louder voice than those who are for the change, your amorphous mask, the dynamic of the group, is going to be more disengaged, more hostile to the change, more passive aggressive to the change. That's why I said to you earlier, get those key players who are excited about change. Give them some information so that they can feed the group positives. Have them know as much about the change so that they, as peer-to-peer, -peer, because that has far more power than leader-to-peer, leader-to-workforce, 
have them help the workforce gain perspective. And then, as I told you, the last is you and your strategic edge. Who do you want to be in the organization? Do you really want to be the person who is a naysayer for everything that's coming down the line because you're not comfortable with what's being spoken? Find a way to become a change agent. I was talking to someone very recently, and you know I've been in the game for a very long time, and I was saying to this executive that I thought it was tough coming up the ranks when I came up the ranks because there was hardly any women there at all. And I felt like I was climbing a mountain that was impossible to get over. And I guess I was. But when I look at what the culture, the corporate cultures look like today with all the chaos, with all the change, with all the global competition that is occurring, I think you got it far worse than I did. And so you need to be steady force in the midst of everything that's happening around you. And how do you become that strategic edge, steady force, all you, is it comes from the inside and it emerges out. It's an attitude that says, I've always been able to handle change and there's no reason I can't be flexible and fluid with what's happening today. Where can I lend a hand that's going to make a difference for my career and the profitability of my organization. Because those two go hand in hand. You can't have a successful career if you're not also concerned about the profitability of your organization. So within your uncomfortableness, you move forward into what can be for you and the company. And so you know better than anyone who the naysayers are because you're hearing it. And make sure you don't sit in a conversation where nothing but negative is being said. Make sure that you are popping in seeds of positivity to what's happening in the future. Make sure that you don't go into agreement with things that are harmful for the company in the future. You can make the difference by gathering up your strategic edge and using it to leverage change in your organization. And I know you can do it because I've seen people do it all the time. But I've also seen what happens when one does not consider employees, one does not consider group dynamic, and one has not really identified your strategic edge. Let me tell you a story that has truth in it, and it's a combination of a bunch of stories. And at the center is where change goes awry. Senior management is so excited about change. And I want you to see it. Change is all capital. It's big, bold letters. And there's exclamation marks all around it. Because this change is going to make a difference for the company. And they come in and they announce it to the group. And they go, see the vision. And I do agree there has to be a vision. But sometimes, more often than not, companies come in with vision before they've got involvement from their organization. So they announce the vision that the company is going to be in the future. And they paint a brilliant picture of that vision. And everyone who is in leadership is excited because they've explained it so perfectly. And then one small voice in the group says, gosh, am I hearing that what we did before wasn't any good or wasn't right or doesn't work or any of those negativity thoughts? And the leaders say, yes, we're doing a pivot because that no longer works. Zap. You've killed off those employees who struggled and suffered and worked to make that process successful for years. You've killed them off and you never even knew it because of your enthusiasm. 
And then you go on to say, and we want you to pivot right into this new idea and this new way of being without any prep. And then from that moment on, unfortunately, because you're comparing everything that's done based upon your new vision, you unconsciously are slapping wrists because no, we don't do it that way. No, that doesn't work with the vision. No, you can't do that. And what happens is people say yes, but they are no longer engaged and you need your people engaged in order to make the results you want. And they're disheartened. And they look around for another job where someone is going to consider them the be-all and the end-all that's coming in to make life, not death. People want to be seen as contributors. People want to be seen as good contributors. People want to be on the side that's going to create future, but they can only do that if you seed them appropriately. This change initiative is going awry in so many small and large companies, it saddens me. So think workforce, employees, how can I make them feel really good to be part of the new? Group dynamic, how can I make the peers, the amorphous mass, lean more towards the positive than the negative? And you and your strategic edge, what can I do to make a difference right where I am today. Thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of it, a seed that you're going to plant for positivity and potential in your career. Hey, and if you're running into any stumbling blocks and want to get your strategic edge, sign up for a free discovery call at thrivewithnancy.com forward slash a p p t forward slash looking forward to talking to you soon i'm thrilled you've listened to the thrive with nancy podcast my intention is to offer quick tips designed for you to apply right away ones that will boost your career immediately i bet you're already considering ways to implement these new ideas. Perfect. Now, if you do me a favor, pass the podcast link on to those who will benefit, your friends and co-workers. Thanks so much.